You're listening to Health Nuts with Dr. Chris Kahn. Making lifestyle changes is hard for many people, and not knowing what to do or how to do it makes the task all the more daunting. Here at Health Nuts, we focus on helping you live a fuller life by discussing everyday health issues and exploring breakthrough solutions on how to overcome them. And now, here's your host, Dr. Chris Carr. Welcome back to another episode of Health Nuts. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Carr, and I've got to tell you I'm real excited for today's guest, and that is Dr. Aaron Ernst. I've learned a ton of him over the years. I've learned a ton from him over the years, and he has a powerful message to share today about your health, but specifically how the health of your gut truly is a cause for so many underlying diseases. Dr. Aaron Ernst completed his undergrad in pre-med and biology at Messiah University in Granham, PA. As a first-generation holistic practitioner, he began his career with a doctorate in chiropractic from Logan College of Chiropractic in Chesterfield, Missouri. While in Missouri, Dr. Aaron began helping patients rebuild their health in a maximized living health center, which was the largest clinic in Missouri. His experience has led him to spend countless hours studying and researching to create procedures and protocols to rebuild health naturally. Currently holding certifications in fitness, functional nutrition, cellular detox, and neurological rehab, Dr. Aaron has traveled all over North America, Europe, and Africa, teaching the principles of maximized living and educating all generations on gaining victory over diseases naturally. In August of 2012, he was asked to attend the London Summer Olympics, and he was one of the official docs to work on USA Judo team but specifically helping assist Kayla Harrison in her first ever gold medal for the sport. He also is a member of the Wellness Advisory Council, and that is currently working on USA Judo, weightlifting, wrestling, and volleyball. He practices out of Charlotte, North Carolina, educates a ton of folks, me included, so I'm glad to have him on. That's a mouthful, Dr. Aaron, so welcome. Yeah, thank you. That's, That's the formal intro on you. What would you say more specifically? What do we what do we need to know about you? Uh, you know, I mean that, that hits just you know the past histories, but um, as of late, you know my my specialty as a maximized living doctor has been to focus on integrating the five essentials of maximized living, as we call it. But so basically, it's the five key interferences that cause every known health disease today. Mm-hmm. That being the way we think, our mindset, how our spine integrates into every organ, cell, and tissue within the body, how we have to eat certain key nutritious foods, not just food for taste, but food for healing. Mm-hmm. That'd be the third one. Fourth, of course, being that we need to not just move our body for exercise, not try to build muscle, but focus on oxygenation and the leanness, you know, getting the body fat in the normal zones, BMI. And then detoxification, which has been a big key for me as of late. Um, you know, I'll call it kind of pain to purpose. Okay. Uh, years and years ago, my wife and I opened the clinic here in Charlotte that you talked about. And during that process, as you know, as being a doctor opening a clinic, it's a big stress. And she got really sick. And we found out she had a low level amount of chronic Lyme disease, had an undiagnosed thyroid condition, ended up, you know, going full blown sort of autoimmune. And um, I had to learn how to do more than just be a chiropractor. I had to learn how to be a well-rounded, holistic physician that can work on all aspects of health. So to answer your question, my focus as of late has been sort of in your gut microbiome, the bacteria, the connectedness of that to the immune system. And some of the the stuff we're going to share for your listeners, I think, will open them up to the idea. If you have an unhealthy gut, you have unhealth in your body. And it's been linked to everything from dementia to Alzheimer's to cancer to heart disease to diabetes, even to things like thyroid conditions and every autoimmune condition on demand today. Yeah, that the, the gut, which uh, from some things I learned from you, uh, I think one of the quotes that I actually stole from you uh, recently was that uh, if, you're, if you need to see a surgeon, you need to have your immune system removed, where do they start? So I think yeah. a lot of folks don't know <laughs> where the immune system is at. So first off, what exactly, where's the immune system at and how are you, what are some signs, symptoms, maybe you have some deficiency with your gut? Yeah, so, so to answer the where is your immune system, um, you know, as we, as we kind of joke around with it, you know, everybody knows where our heart is, where our lungs are, where our stomach is. But, you know, by definition, your immune system is comprised 80% 
in your intestines. So your small intestine, large intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and stomach house 80% of your immune system function. So the other 20% resides in every other square inch of your body, your thymus, your brain, your nerve system, your blood, the red blood cells, white blood cells. So in essence, every square inch of our body is immune system. In fact, we know that our skin is one of the primary first immunological defenses because it acts as a protective barrier. So if you're going to have your immune system removed, you'd have to remove your blood, your skin, all of your organs, your entire digestive system. And of course, we know that you wouldn't survive that. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So signs, yeah. signs, like to answer your second question, yeah. signs of immunodeficiency would obviously be constant illness, constant sickness, and chronic conditions that plague so many Americans, like sinus infections, you know, uh, eczema, rashes generalized weakness, fatigue, tiredness, because in all, all honesty, our immune system's job is to provide a level of protection, provide a level of clearance. So if you're diagnosed with anything, if you take a medication for anything, or you have a you know reoccurring flu, virus, cold, whatever, then you would have signs of a weakened immunity. And as that, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the folks that we come across in the office, they have these... Um, chronic disease, these inflammatory processes that are taking place, some of the nutritional deficiencies as well, and vitamin deficiencies, which ones particular have you seen uh, in your uh, patient load recently with uh, coming right. your way? Yeah, so in relation to the immune system, I mean, the obvious one for me, and um, something that all of our listeners today need to learn, is that vitamin D is directly connected to our immune system function. It is a, an immune precursor. Technically, vitamin D is not actually a vitamin. It's by definition, it's a hormone. So when we say stuff like, uh, "Oh, I may have hormone issues," or "I'm, I'm hormonal," or you know, like um, I don't have a vitamin deficiency. Technically, if you're vitamin D deficient, you're actually hormone deficient. And um, some of the new research is pointing out that our vitamin D levels are directly connected to the strength of our immunity. And sadly, most medical professions. They want you to be at about a 30 to 60 range. And unfortunately, when, even when we test people, your average American's deficient. Most of them are below 30, and they wonder why they're sick all the time. They wonder why they're tired. So something as simple as running a vitamin D test can show us the strength of your immune system. From a functional level, you want it to be between 60 or 80, preferably 90 to 100, because the higher our vitamin D the more less likely we are to get things like cancer and heart disease and diabetes. And so there's, there's all science to back this up. It's just most people don't know the numbers and they don't know where they need to be. No, and I, I had a patient who um, came to me the other day and actually she was a, 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 a friend of my wife and, and she came in and she said, Hey, I'm, I'm deficient in uh, vitamin D and it's the second time I've been deficient in it. My doc is wanting me to go on, 50,000 U's, 50,000 right. IU's of it. What's the difference between doing a, a huge dosage like that compared to maybe like a maintenance dose, of like a 5,000 units, the difference between well, brands? Yeah, so the first, first and most important is going to be that that sort of prescription vitamin D is actually a synthetic form, and it's mm -hmm. not technically vitamin D2. I'm uh, sorry, vitamin D3. It's a vitamin D2 sort of vitamin D3 precursor. So um, if somebody's going to swallow a 50,000 unit vitamin D prescription, first of all, it's not actually vitamin D3. And second of all, because it's synthetic, the body's going to treat it as a chemical and try to excrete as much of it as it can. So that'd be the first effect. If you're going to actually take 50,000 units, I would suggest you just take vitamin D3, but you need to take a probiotic with it because you, in order to pull vitamin D3 across your stomach membrane, there has to be other vitamins like vitamin K uh, and vitamin U. So what we want to do is let the probiotic nature of a healthy gut produce the vitamin K, produce the vitamin U, and allow for you to extract the vitamin D3 that you swallow. But in all honesty, you know, as long as it's uh, a sunny day and it's in the you know, spring to summertime, uh, 10 to 15 minutes outside gives you about 10,000 units of vitamin D naturally. And the benefit of that is it's going to be a sulfonated vitamin D3, which your body will inherently create. And that is the best form of vitamin D3 ever as one your body makes. Right. I, I think one of the things that um, a lot of folks don't know is being outside. But So I'm, I'm in Pittsburgh this time of year. Uh, it, it's like that. I know you're down in Charlotte, so the weather's a lot nicer down your way. So outside of 
the uh, vitamin D3, D2, what do you, what's the standard dosage typically that uh, you're telling well, so again, for maintenance? You know, it really, honestly, depends upon the number that a person's at. So my, my first answer is going to be, let's not, you know, guess with our, our health. We want to be very specific with our health. Getting your vitamin D tested is absolutely crucial because, for example, if your vitamin D is at 25, the recommended dose is going to be different than if your vitamin D is at 60. You know, so just from maintenance, maintenance. your average adult should be consuming about 5,000 international units per day. A uh, child can have about a thousand international units per day. Uh, if we're talking somebody though that's chronically low, I mean, they may need to be actually consuming ten or fifteen or twenty thousand units daily, with the intent to retest after say thirty to sixty days to confirm. And the nice thing today is, you know, it's, you don't have to run off to your doctor to get a vitamin D three test. They actually have home test kits you can order online. Right. And a lot of uh, cities like where you're at and me here in Charlotte, they have labs you can just walk into and say, I'd like my vitamin D tested. What are, so other things that are going to kill your, um, your immune system, we, we know antibiotics are, are going to wreck your immune system as well. What, what else out there um, that uh, folks should be looking for that could be really be uh, well, compromising their immune right. health? So, you know, I'm, I'm going to answer that, but I think it's a, a key point that we talk about the antibiotics and why on earth would an antibiotic destroy the immune system? Yeah. Because so many people take antibiotics when they have a cold or a sinus infection or something to that effect, thinking it's a, a supporter. But um, because 80% of your immune system lives inside your digestive system, an antibiotic consumed either directly or by eating meat or chicken or beef that has been antibiotically treated, you are destroying the gut bacteria. And as we create a state of dysbiosis, or we damage our microbiome, which is just simply the technical term for the innate um, communication between your digestive system and your brain and the bacteria, we weaken the immune system. So by far, antibiotics are the one of the biggest sources of immune depleters. And that's not just like, oh, I had one for, you know, like a cold I had, you know, maybe six months ago. It's right. your, your daily and or uh, lifetime exposure because of eating the meats and the chicken and taking it. Um, I'm going to say probably the second weakest sort of, or the thing that weakens our immune system the most is definitely sugar, uh, not just white sugar, but also processed sugars like the high fructose corn syrup, even in the degree of things like um, uh, lactose that you get from milk or fructose that you get from fruits. So part of the healing diet or the advanced plan diet that we discuss as Maximize Living Doctors is cutting out almost all forms of carbohydrates, including fruits, when you're in a healing crisis because sugar inherently just shuts the immune system down. And you have these, these processes take place. I think one of the things I really love that you shared was in the food, we don't really like to think like if we're not on an antibiotic that we're taking for a flu or what have you, that we're not getting them in our system. But I mean, the, the, the protein sources specifically, it is just unbelievable how much is out there. Well, so let, let me, let me make a point that might stir the pot with your, your listeners here. Yeah. It's actually known that when you feed an animal, chicken or beef, an antibiotic, that not only do they get un, you know, unhealthy, first of all, but the, the farmers think that it helps them to survive sickness and illness and disease, but it's actually used because it fattens them up. So one of the side effects of taking long-term antibiotics is weight gain. And of course, because we sell beef and chicken by the pound, the fatter I can make these things, the more money I make, and see, we all as a culture think that antibiotics are good. They help us to heal, they fight infections, but in fact, they don't. So you eat a piece of meat that's antibiotic produced or you know, uh, enhanced, or you eat a piece of chicken that's antibiotic enhanced. That's why we have such a big issue with weight loss and we have this obesity epidemic. It's not because of a lack of exercise or a lack of you know, taking right supplements or you know, doing the right things. It's just simply because we're eating ourselves into disease by eating diseased you know, protein sources. And those toxins then become fat soluble. And then those toxins, they get stored typically, you know, either around the organs or around the belly or in different yeah. parts of their body. And then if you don't. Well, you don't and, and, and the other reason that the majority of us tend to store all of that extra fat around our abdomen is because that's where the damage is taking place originally. So if we have either leaky gut or we have an inflammatory bowel or we have some sort of, you know, um, digestive dis disturbance, 
the body is aware of that and fat's used as an insulator fat's used as a protector it's sort of like a trash can so wherever there's damage in the body you'll often find more fat so if we have lots of abdominal fat it's an indication again that something's going on digestively which is an indication that your immune system is weak thus we get to see the whole picture and that, that was an awesome segue that you kind of talked about. So you, one of the buzzwords that we hear out there is this, this leaky gut and, and the progression of it. So you have the, you have the your, your GI tract now becomes inflammatory. What, how does that progress? How would somebody know maybe some of the things that were taking place that they possibly are going through uh, similar uh, leaky gut uh, issues? So you're asking like symptoms of a leaky gut. Uh, first and foremost, it's going to be things like chronic fatigue, joint pain, specifically in the morning. That's your classic, like I woke up, my knee is stiff, my back is stiff, but by about nine or 10 or noon, you know, I feel great. And then the next day I woke up and I'm stiff again. Uh, chronic fatigue, simply because it wrecks our immune system, it wrecks our adrenal system, it adds additional stress. But we start getting the heavy hitters like brain fog and, you know, even things like diagnosed conditions, arthritis, um, inflammatory conditions, where we have, you know, pancreatitis, or we have diabetes, um, I've even seen some people, you know, complain of like a, a low level base headache that tends to hang around the back of the eye and the skull because we have neurological reflexes between the intestines and the brain. But your classic signs are going to be somebody who's eating food and they're noticing their nose running. It's an inflammatory response. It's a food sensitivity response. It's going to be that patient who has arthritis, uh, not just joint arthritis, but even the rheumatoid or the inflammatory. It's going to be your classic person that struggles with a thyroid condition or even diabetes or just sinus allergies. Because again, all of those are sign of a weakened immunity and the weakened immunity comes from the damage to the intestines. And of note, what a leaky gut technically means is your, your permeability has sort of um, enhanced. So instead of keeping toxins in the bowels so they are excreted into the toilet, we tend to leak the toxins, we leak viruses, we leak bacteria back through the, the intestinal wall into the blood, and that spike in the blood of toxins and viruses and bacteria creates an autoimmune response, and that's why we tend to see a direct connection between leaky gut and autoimmune conditions, which, by the way, are the majority of most conditions people deal with today. And Yeah, and I think probably the last 10 patients maybe that you've seen, you probably put, I think those numbers are getting more and more they're increasing over time just because of uh, nutritionally uh, most folks are so deficient in their nutrition that they now are taking these foods that are kind of leading them down to that that disorder if we go into um now with with the uh your immune system we talked about the ways maybe how you can recognize it now let's say you have it what can you do naturally to kind of you nourish the immune system or where can you go from here yeah so i mean just the, you know the inherent thing i want to touch is your average person is going to say uh, I'm going to take more vitamin C. I'll do things like echinacea. You know, this is, this is the, the common thought, like my immunity is weak. What do I do? I, I, I do those two things and that's it. So um, what I want you guys to understand is your immune system is an integrated, complete pathway between how your brain communicates to your body and how your body communicates to the intestinal system. So if we're going to work on boosting our immunity, we need to work on boosting our digestive system and nervous system. So obviously for you and me as chiropractors, one of the greatest and first things we do anytime someone wants an immunity boost is we assess, we check, and we remove neurological interference. You know, I'm sure you'll agree with this. The majority of people we find have neck stress and low back stress. And there's a direct connection between first cervical nerve, the vagus nerve, with digestive function. There's also a direct connection between T12, L1, L2, sort of the upper lower back, and the digestive system. And that's why most people complain of neck discomfort and back discomfort. So step number one would be remove the subluxation, remove the interference, and allow your brain to reconnect its innate power to your digestive system. You'll have an instant boost in immunity. This is why I think so many people see that zest of life come back when they start to get their spine worked on by a chiropractor. Uh, you know, we hear testimonials like, oh, you know, my, I haven't gone to the bathroom in weeks. I got an adjustment. I went to the bathroom. Uh, I've been catching colds all the time. I got adjusted. I no longer am getting sick. And that happens just because of the pure innate power of the nerve system. Beyond that, now is when we start addressing digestive functions directly. Um, it's one thing to take a probiotic. You know, a lot of people think I'm going to try to fix my intestines by taking probiotics. But you have to understand that most people 
have a leaky gut or they have a condition known as dysbiosis where there's actually too much bacteria. The thought of taking a probiotic to fix dysbiosis would be the equivalent of taking a piece of salt and tossing it to the ocean and saying you made it saltier. It's just it's not going to be enough. There's, there's an entire leaky gut dysbiosis rebuild protocol. Um, if I had to sum it up in sort of four quick points, it would be remove every food that interferes and damages the intestines. That's going to be things like vegetable oils, um, you know, the, the sugars, the carbohydrates, the processed foods, wheat, pasta, rice, corn, all of the grains because they're inflammatory. Second would be we want to replace those foods with gut healing specific foods. And what's unique about gut foods is they tend to be the plant-based fats. So things like avocados, coconut, flax, chia, hemp. And then there's this fantastic gut healing food that is becoming more popular today, but known as bone broth. Right. It's, it's as simple as it sounds. You're making a soup out of bones from a grass-fed beef or a free-range chicken, and the broth is loaded with fat. And so we drink that on a daily basis like you'd have coffee or tea for breakfast. And over time, it nourishes and it encourages new cell growth. So we remove, we've replaced, now we want to repair. And the repair process for me comes from getting tested, finding out the inflammatory markers, bringing them down. But your classic method of repairing the intestines is start taking a digestive enzyme. It helps you to break the proteins apart, make them smaller, make them easier to absorb, and start looking into things like nourishing, healing oils, clove, thyme, oregano, even enzymes like a lysozyme. You know, we have a product that you probably use called Max GI. It's right. fantastic for helping to actually repair the intestine wall. In fact, another one called glutamine has been shown to be a really good sort of um, amino acid that helps to seal and heal the intestines. So I would be encouraging people to take digestive enzymes, using healing oils, using glutamine. And then the last is to just try to reestablish the correct bacteria. And that's where probiotics come in, or that's where eating raw you know, fermented foods come in. So it's really a four R step system that you know sounds easy, but it just needs to be done in that order. Yeah, and and having just the tools now and the knowledge of, of knowing what the heck to do, because a lot of folks they just get frustrated and either they don't know what the heck it is, and then they go to you know they just mask the symptom with with a, like a Pepto Bismol or you know a, a Nexium or something for the reflux, and they never address the cause, but they take the drug and then they they think by taking the drug that they're actually improving their health. And it's actually weakening over time. So I've loved those natural natural methods that you shared. Um, I, I know real quick, because we're going to get to some other portions of this. One of the things I've loved that you had shared before is just, just a, kind of some fat. If you could kind of touch real quick on, on fasting, how does fasting play a role in this? And do you recommend that? In, in uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, so fasting plays a role in generalized healing for just basically one simple concept. Um, when you look at any sort of animal, be it a dog, a cat, or just anything really, a wild animal, uh, whenever they go through a, a state of being in a healing crisis, so let's say uh, one of them catches a cold, a virus, a flu, or there was even an attack, I don't know, a lion attacked a gazelle, somehow the gazelle got away. Um, in order for it to heal, they innately and instinctively, all wild animals, even domesticated animals, go through a fasting phase. It's just in their DNA. They do it innately. And what you'll find is they just don't eat until they get well again. Now, the challenge with us is, of course, we have this brain up here that says, well, that, that's crazy. That's insane. I'm going to die. So we overthink it too much. Right. In fact, the average American has enough energy stored on them to be able to fast for weeks because we generally need to lose weight. We want to engage fat burning processes. So what is so unique about fasting is that it doesn't have to be don't eat anything. You know, you can do daily intermittent fasting, which is basically just skipping one meal per day. You know, skip breakfast, have lunch, have dinner, repeat over. If you're going to get a little more advanced, skip both breakfast and lunch and just have dinner. If you're going to get even more advanced, skip all three meals and do it for a period of time. My suggestion for most people is start light, you know, do no breakfast, have lunch and dinner, and to take that breakfast meal and replace it with a high fat meal. It can be a high fat smoothie if you're a beginner. It could be, you know, this ever popular bone broth uh, that we've been talking about because it's, it's very high in fat, almost no carbs. It's nourishing to the body. You can even do the bulletproof style coffee like Dave Asprey's Bulletproof, which is Love simply it. combining organic coffee with grass-fed butter 
MCT oil or brain octane oil or coconut oil, because again, these are very gut healing oils. And by increasing our fats and cutting back our carbohydrates, we encourage our body to enter a state of ketosis. And ketosis is again a healing state. So for those of uh, your listeners who are you know, struggling with some sort of health condition or they're looking to lose five or 10 pounds or they're trying to overcome leaky gut or inflammatory bowel, intermittent daily fasting, even block fasting with bone broth is fantastic. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I know it was such an integral part, especially with the, with the, um, with the health, but specifically with the, the, with the gut health. So I'm so glad you were able to share that. Uh, so one of the things I love to talk about this podcast and kind of make it because you've already given the audience just, just a ton of, of takeaways, but if you had three health nuggets to share uh, that they could, they, they could implement on top of what you've already said, what would you recommend? You know, honestly, I think if we have to boil it down, it's kind of the, the understanding idea that our health is based off of three core foundations. So we're going to go 30,000 foot view here now. Health as a whole has three core foundations basis is you'll call it the, the three pillars of health if you will and the first pillar is the fact that you have to understand that your gut is intimately connected with 80 percent of your ability to activate immune healing we know the immune system can repair the body we know that it is the inborn innate system so we have to address our gut if we want to heal it's pillar number one pillar number two would be the, the fact that you know we live in a day today where the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we're exposed to, the shampoos, our lotions, our colognes, our chemicals, all of it is chemically laden. We're, we're toxic. If, if you have a pulse, you're toxic. And so the second sort of nugget would be you have to address the detoxification aspects of your body. This isn't just uh, I did my annual detox anymore. It's 2017. Detoxing has to be a daily engaging process. So you know, we have to address our chemical load, we have to get tested for it, and we have to be very specific in removing toxins from our body on a daily basis. That's pillar number two. Pillar number three would be the concept that everybody misses the fact that our nerve system is the number one regulator of our immune system. You know, it's great to have a clean gut, it's great to have no toxins, but if your spine is out of alignment, if you have scoliosis, if you have a disc issue, if you have subluxation or nerve damage, those two mean nothing. So it's the spine as the third and final and probably the most important pillar because without that pillar, all else crumbles. So fix your spine, you get well. Pull the chemical toxins, you get well. Clean out your gut, you get well. There's our three nuggets. I think for so many that um, that connection which you just made, which was brilliant, but a lot of just a lot of the late folks out there, they may not make that connection, but you can you can had the best diet in the world, but if you're toxic in the spine, then it, it's not gonna make a world of difference in the long run. That Absolutely. was awesome. That's why so many vegetarians get cancer and that's why so many vegans die of heart disease. <laughs> Having a clean diet is not enough. Right. You know, the analogy that I use a lot, if we have enough time for this, is mm -hmm. the three-legged stool concept. So we take those three pillars, gut, chemicals, and spine, and we create a tripod foundation. It will not wobble, it will not bend. Take one leg away and instantly it is unstable. So it's not just pick one and off you go. It's you must address all three. You have to clean out your gut, you have to remove chemical stressors, you have to remove neurological stress. If you even skip one of those, you cannot heal innately. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. The, um, I love just th this part of it, I'm just gonna throw a bunch of, a couple questions at you. Uh, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know you love to read. Uh, you're, you're an avid reader. What best resource you could uh, pass on? You know, honestly, it's, it's, it's this guy right here. It's called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. It is by uh, Vishen. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Uh, Lakahini. Mm -hmm. Vishen is the founder and the creator of Mind Valley. And if you guys have never exposed yourself to Mind Valley, it is by far the best sort of engineering for the human brain in essence vision was a computer programmer who tried to figure out how do you hack the human mind and get inside here and figure out limiting beliefs and how to basically reprogram the way you think and as we discussed earlier the number one essential for health in our five essentials is our mindset you know we can think ourselves into illness and we can think ourselves into health and well-being so you have to spend time programming your brain. And The Code of the Extraordinary Mind is by far my 2017 best book yet. My goal is 52 books this year, and this one is the top of the mark. So I know what I'm doing when I get off this podcast. Yes, great book. 
the, uh, next, what makes you a health nut? Uh, you know, honestly, I think it, it came from, like we talked about this pain to purpose concept. You know, um, when I was in my teenage years, um, I was suffering with really bad breathing issues. I had sarcoidosis. Oh, wow. I had three inhaled corticosteroids just to pull oxygen in. Um, I had a nebulizer and sort of a version of a CPAP machine that would push oxygen when I sleep because I couldn't engage my lung function. Um, my my uh, pulmonologist would always say, you've got the lungs of a 90-year-old even though you're only 19. And nobody could figure out where it's coming from. Uh, I got in a car accident. I injured my neck, entered chiropractic. I'd never been adjusted my whole life. I thought chiropractors were for car accidents and you know neck pain and back pain, which is why I went. Mm -hmm. The uh, doctor I went to uh, basically opened my, my eyes to the holistic sort of subluxation base of chiropractic. And he explained to me that um, not only did I injure my neck from the accident, but that I had a upper thoracic scoliosis that was creating my lung issues and my breathing issues. Six months of chiropractic care with him, I've never taken an inhaled corticosteroid. I've never needed the machines. My lungs have cleared out. I have MRIs that prove that they're back to their normal function. And um, that pulled me from studying to become a medical doctor to becoming a chiropractor. That was my first doctoral degree. Since then, I've taken it to becoming sort of a ferocious reader and a, a, an advocate for all things natural healing, because honestly, that's what the body prefers, as opposed to adding toxins through medications and doing medical approaches. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad that it found you and you didn't end up yeah. uh, in the model that uh, more likely you're headed out. So what, one of the last ones I'd like to end on. So you, we, you have this person, right? There's that person out there that's listening and, and they've got all this stuff going on and, and they're just frustrated. And what type of motivation can you give them to, to, to carry on? And what would you tell them to do? You know, I think it, it's a great question because so many people do that. You know, they get stuck and they've been Googling and looking for answers. And I think what happens is in the medical profession, if we talk just say medicine, um, the, the amount of hope is pretty much zero, you know, um, it's always, um, well, you're gonna be on this the rest of your life, or we don't know, or let's try this or let's try that. So, um, I think that, you know, the biggest inspiration is just knowing that your body was divinely created. You know, I believe personally that God is the one who orchestrated the, the chemical and biological effects of the human body by creating it. And because of that, you were given a gift of health, just like, all of us have been given various things in our lives. It's yours and it's there for the taking. But the challenge becomes when we have interferences that we don't know about. You know, the, the, the analogy would be this pen is supposed to fall when I drop it. But if my hand is in the way preventing it, my hand is the interference. It's not that you can't heal. It's that there is one or two or three key interferences. So the hope comes from you are supposed to heal. You're divinely created to heal. Nothing is too impossible for the power of your body. Cancer, easy when you have no interference. Heart disease, easy when you have no interference. Leaky gut, easy when you have no interference. And as, as simple as it sounds, finding the interferences and removing them allows for your body to heal. And that is my greatest inspiration for, for those of you who are listening. You just need the right tests. You need the right coach. You need the right mentor. You do that, it's guaranteed your body can heal by itself. Yeah, and it's such a good way to end it because it, it, it shows the power, power not only that, um, not the outside in approach, but as long as you have no interference in your body, your, your body is divinely yep. created to heal. So uh, last and before I let you go, you're the man down in Charlotte. How do patients come across you? How, if somebody needs to find you, what do they do? Uh, so yeah, just, I mean, the obvious would be just visit our website. Uh, it's simple. It's Ask Dr. Ernst. That's A S K D R. E-R-N-S-T dot com. You're going to find everything from our clinic information to blogs, to podcasts, to radio shows. The second is going to be that, you know, I know just like you do this podcast, I have a weekly broadcast that airs on uh, 1110 AM, which is WBT. It is uh, a syndicated station. So you can pick it up online uh, just by going to WBT.com. They broadcast through various uh, channels in other cities as well. So you can either look up the, the airing station in your area or you can just tune in online with WBT.com. Um, of course, the Ask Dr. Ernst podcast, just like yours, is available. So going to iTunes, they can find that. But um, honestly, there's so many resources. The best is just go to the website because they're all interlinked. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I highly, highly recommend his stuff. He's, he's got a ton of knowledge to share. So uh, Dr. Ernst, he said it all. Yeah, thanks so much.
thanks for having us. Thank, or th- thanks for coming on, and I'll uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Yep, thanks. Bye. You got it. So you've heard from the experts yourself this episode and have gotten some golden nuggets on health. There is so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to pghcw.com. Again, that's pghcw.com. And sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free info on how to get and stay healthy. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Health Nuts with Dr. Chris Carr. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and please leave a review.